that wouldn't have held as much weight. And prior to Pentecost, they would have had they wouldn't have had the power that they had on this day. But after having to having experienced Pentecost for themselves, after having been endowed with power from above. You can't help but to say, you don't even have to touch me. If Jesus was here, you could touch the hem of his garment. But I have on the inside what Jesus had on the outside. And all you have to do is look on me. Tell somebody, I'm a walking advertisement. I'm a living testimony. I'm a living epistle. You don't have to, I don't have to touch you. I don't have to speak into you. You should be able to see the life I live and know that there's something different about me. You should be able to know there's something on the inside that's working on the outside that can not only bring about a change in my life, but it can effectively bring about a change in your life too. He said, look on us. He gave them his attention. Many times I'm walking down the street, I'll be honest, there are some people that are, want you to sign this petition for gay rights and sign this petition, the petition to save the whales and yeah. sign this petition, <laughs> petition for this and that. And sometimes I fall off when I see them coming across the street. Yeah. If I see them up there, I'll grab my phone and pretend I'm talking on it or something just to, so they, I can't look in my eye to eye because something about their eye contact, once they get your eye contact and they just keep talking and you start slowing down. And even if you don't want to, you end up entertaining the conversation. These men said, look on us, and he gave them his attention. He saw something in them that said, wait a minute, these, these, these guys ain't joking. These aren't like the, the, like the Samaritan man experience when people came by and saw him laying at the side of the road, and they kept going and going. And they obviously saw something was wrong with them and left him there for dead. He said, wait a minute, these men are actually stopping helping me, and I see in them they have something that they can offer. They have more than I'm asking for, and they have exactly what I need. He said this, Peter said, look at us. Silver and gold have I none. What you're asking for has some value. What you're asking for has a little bit of value. It will help you get you a little bit. Have you ever come and asked, oh, I, if I could just get $5 here and there, if I could just get $10 just to get me over, and, and that's really not all I need, but it'll get me what I need to get for now. It'll carry me over. It'll hold me until I can try to make do. And have you ever had like more month than you had money? Have you never needed to have more budge in your budget? Have you not had enough of what you needed to have of? But you said, if I could just get a little bit more, it'll at least hold me until I can think about it. These men said, I, I, I. I don't have even a little bit you're asking for. But the thing that I do have is more than what you need. Silver and gold have I none. But that which I do have, I offer to you. You haven't asked for it. You haven't made your petition. You haven't made a request. But I have enough of it that I can give it to you without missing it. I can give it to you without coming short. I can give it to you without lacking myself. I need somebody who can come into the sanctuary and have enough Holy Ghost power that they can pray for me and not feel drained. That they can touch me and not feel virtue leaving their body. That they have enough Holy Ghost in them that they can reach out and help fix my problem. And not just be concerned about their own. Silver and gold have I none, but that which I have, I offer to you. Rise up and walk. Hmm. For a man that has never walked on his own, a day in his life, he might have laughed. He might have looked at them in hesitation, a little reluctant to actually follow through with their instructions. He might have waited a minute to say, uh, are, are these guys serious? I thought they had something that I could benefit from, but this sounds kind of sketchy. Have you ever asked someone for a certain amount of money or a certain blessing and they offer it to you right there and you're so fast and you're like, oh, oh wait a minute. Is this real? It, it, could this really be happening? Wait a minute. It makes you think twice about what you really asked for. Rise up and walk. If this was a movie right about now, you would hear the violin playing, you would hear a little bit of a drum roll just softly because the man's mind is actually playing through the next few seconds of his life. If I actually take time 
to do what this man says if I actually make the attempt to rise up and walk on my own? If the words that they are speaking to me are in fact life and strength to my bones, would I really have the same testimony that I was happy with what I had and now what I what what was given to me wasn't enough? Would I would I be ungrateful? Would I be able to have would I be able to talk to somebody else? How happy would I be if I actually follow through with this? There was some, there, there's a person I know of that has an infirmity of his own and every now and then a preacher would come and try to uh, speak life to his infirmity and tell them that I speak healing to you, I speak healing to you. And every now and then he would say, no, well, I don't want healing because the government sent me a check for this and I don't want to lose that check. And so not everybody who has an infirmity really want to lose it. Some people are just comfortable right where they are. Some people are fine with the problems they have because in some way, some shape, some form, they benefit from it. But this man, taking the disciples at their word, stood up immediately. Verse 7 says, he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Yes, sir. But verse 8 is where the testimony comes in. Leaping up, he stood and walked. He didn't go home. Didn't go to his friend's house. Didn't go to his girl's house. Didn't go to his mother and father's house. Didn't run around town so everybody could see what the Lord had done. Didn't go making phone calls and visiting so everybody could know that I was lame, but now I walk. I was blind, but now I see. But immediately he went into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. And in the temple, people saw him and praised God with him. Let me tell you, when you ask God for what you need, and you get exactly what you need, the first place you need to be is in the temple giving it right back to God. He could have taken his legs and walked all over the city, but he took his legs and started dancing before God. He could have took his legs and walked into somebody's house, but he took his legs and walked into the temple of God to be able to give praise to God. Let me tell you, when you ask God for something, make sure it's worth something. Don't just ask God for money. Don't just ask God for cars. Don't just ask God for houses. Don't just ask God for favor. But make sure you ask God for a right mind. Make sure you ask God for help. Make sure you ask God to all be able to keep you in the time of trouble. Make sure you ask God to be able to keep your mind when it wants to go crazy. Make sure you ask God to be able to keep your body. When you make sure you ask God to give you a no when you when you want to say yes. Make sure you ask God to give you a yes when you want to say no. Make sure you ask God to give you the strength to be able to endure. But the Bible says, be ye a, a good soldier. Endure hardness as a good soldier. So you will be able to receive the crown of life. Lift your hands and shout yes! Yeah! something. Many times we come to the church. Many times we go to our friends. Many times we request from our pastors these little things and we ask them, can you do this for me? Can you pray for little my cousin Johnny? Can you pray for my nephew Boo Boo? Can you pray for this person and that person? But how often do we say, Pastor, can you pray that I'll pray, really pray my strength to the Lord. Pray that I'll be able to grow in God. Pray that God may be able to be pleased with my life. Pray that I might be able to walk in sin. Pray that I might not practice going where I shouldn't go. Pray that the Lord be able to keep my tongue and word my mouth to a season word. Pray that the Lord be able to open my eyes so that I can see what I need to see. Pray that the Lord would be able to help me in my studies so I might be a good steward of his word. If you want to get something, get something worth something. Many times we don't ask for what we really need because we're afraid we just might get it. Oh yeah. We don't ask God for patience because we just might get it. We don't ask God for long suffering because we just might get it. We don't really want to increase our faith because to increase our faith we got to be lacking. We want to see miracles, but we don't want to be miracles. I want to see the blind that I open, but Lord, don't blind me. I want to see the lame to walk, but Lord, don't take my legs from me. I want to see the deaf to be made to hear, but don't, Lord, don't, don't let it be me. Let it be someone else. If we're going to get something from God, 
Make sure that what we're asking for is worth something. Make sure that it will carry us over as the days get harder and harder to live right. It, will, it won't be nothing to get a house and a car in just a few days. All you'll need is your social security number. But to be able to live right, we will soon see the church stores closing. We will soon see the righteous persecuted. We will soon see people walking away from the church and the masses. And when we ask God for anything, Lord, give me the strength to endure. Lord, give me the strength that I might be able to stand upright before you. Lord, give me the strength that I might be the servant that you're calling for in these last and evil days. Get something worth something. God bless you.